Back at it again, and I'm sure you guys have guessed already. Today's topic of discussion is Trump's VP pick, uh, because there was a list that was released, uh, a short list of Trump's or, or of people that Trump is considering to be VP. And I want to play the segment from Newsmax and Carl Higby because I really agree with his analysis on some of these uh, guys and gals. Um, and I'm going to give my my top three and why towards the end. Comment below who you would like to see Trump have as VP and also why. Why that specific person? And I'm going to explain why I choose or why I chose the people that I chose at the end as well. So stick around and uh, like, share, comment, hit that subscribe button if you are new. And let's dive into Carl Higby's analysis on each candidate. Check it out. We need somebody who doesn't put on a flannel shirt to go to Idaho, a suit to go to Manhattan, and then like boat shoes with no socks to go to Martha's Vineyard. It has to be someone who is totally comfortable with exactly who they are for better, for worse, that doesn't kowtow to special interests or pander to whatever group. Trump's VP candidate, for lack of better terms, needs to give approximately zero Fs. So who's on the list? Let, let's start with what I think is the most vanilla candidate. Okay, Senator Marco Rubio. Now, this is probably going to be a problem for him right here. Little Marco, little Marco. Because <laughs> everybody knows him as that now. Look, he's run for president, he knows the game, but he's also from Florida, and you typically don't have the president and the vice president from the same state. But look, I think Senator Rubio is right on most of his policy. I actually like the guy personally. I just don't think he connects with people the same way Trump does, which I realize is a super high bar, but that bar has been set. Could Marco Rubio walk onto a stage and win a primary with, against some of the other people on Trump's list? I don't know. Or even win a debate against someone like Matt Gates? Could he out-debate, I don't know, Dan Bongino, Megyn Kelly, some of the people that are really good at I don't think so. He, he just doesn't suck the energy out of the room and shine the spotlight on himself like some of the other people. And not to dog the guy. Like I said, I like him. I think he's a good at governing. I just don't think he has enough flame. And here's another one. Dr. Ben Carson, another guy, ran for president, held a cabinet position under Trump, did a fantastic job, and he can debate. I was asked by an NPR reporter once, why don't I talk about race that often? I said, it's because I'm a neurosurgeon. And she thought that was a strange response. And you say, I said, you see, when I take someone to the operating room, I'm actually operating on the thing that makes them who they are. The skin doesn't make them who they are. Yeah, nailed that one. Look, I personally have immeasurable respect for the guy. I know him personally. And one of the greatest brain surgeons of probably his generation. His story is perfect. Raised on a library card where his mother made him read books while she was working multiple jobs to keep a roof over their heads. You literally cannot get a better success story in the United States of America than this guy. But he's just not entertaining. And if Trump has showed us anything, you have to be an entertainer so the media will cover you. It's like energy begets energy. He has not also demonstrated the ability to get elected. He's the only one on this short list who's never been elected to public office before. And I realize that's not a qualification because obviously Trump never was, but there is a process that you go through to understand how that works. Trump's an anomaly. He's not the norm. I mean, that's a critical part of it, especially if you're going to be the top of the ticket in four years. Here's another one. Senator Tim Scott. Great story. Again, votes the conservative line. Pretty captivating on stage. And he has a rags to riches stories. He's also from a strategic state, South Carolina, but could he pick up the mantle in four years and run with it? I imagine he probably could, but I'm not 100% convinced yet. And maybe that's on me. Maybe that's me just not knowing enough about him. But he's certainly a viable contender, more viable than I think Marco Rubio. Now, Senator J.D. Vance, newly elected senator from Ohio. Here's what he's going to face. He was a never-Trumper at one point, who then garnered Trump's endorsement, won his election, and now has become a staunch supporter of the president even on some of the more controversial issues. He stands up, he doesn't care. He takes all kinds of arrows for the guy now, which is good. I'm here for that. Because if you're a convert from hating Trump to now you know, convincing others to get in Trump camp, you're going to be very good at it because you understand both sides. But you also know how to compete for votes in a much more mild faction of the Republican Party. So that could be very powerful. He's a top contender. 
But being so recent to the public stage, his ability to pick up the mantle in four years could be directly impacted by the successes of a second Trump administration. However, he is in the state which no Republican has ever been elected president without winning. Now, I, I actually like how much fire this guy has found because he is the perfect example of a moderate Republican who had just had enough. He got involved, the Democrats pushed him too far, and he turned around, and now he is full bore on all cylinders fighting back. He is the perfect valmorphification of the Republican Party over the last eight years, and I like it. And then we got Byron Donalds, Congressman Byron Donalds from Florida. Now, personally, I do know him a little bit. I really like this dude, and here is a perfect example why. Are you worried about retribution after the fact? There was threats that folks that weren't going to vote for McCarthy would be kicked off committees. Now you put yourself in a, in a pretty public position opposing who the person that could be the speaker. Are you worried about retribution? Man, I'm 6'2", 275. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> yes! Yes! I love this. This guy doesn't back down. He speaks very plainly. He is the most similar to Trump in his delivery, in his convictions, and in his politics. Unfortunately, he's also from Florida, but... I also see him as the strongest VP candidate and future presidential candidate. And let's be honest, he's also black, which in fact will hurt the Democrats' attacks on Trump because they're always, they're the, the one go-to they have is, oh, Trump's a racist. Well, if his VP is black, you can't say that. He would be my first pick, actually. Another big name floated out, Congresswoman from New York, Elise Stefanik. She's the fourth highest ranking Republican and has recently been a very strong supporter of Trump. Last week's verdict in New York shows how corrupt, rigged, and un-American the weaponized justice system has become under Joe Biden and Democrats. Look, I, I love most of her politics. I think most of the MAGA base does too. However, is she likable enough to run for the top office in four years? That's going to be the big question. She's also from New York, which means it's highly unlikely she's even going to win her own state. And I make fun of Kamala Harris for not winning. I mean, she could pull to like 1% in her own state in a primary all the time. So I have to apply that standard across the board. That leaves billionaire turned North Dakota governor Doug Burgum. I'm going to talk to every advisor on campus. What do you want to do with your life? Do you want to be in a software company? It wasn't a thing. Five years later, I was betting the farm on something that did not exist. Technology is changing every job, every company, and every industry, and it has during my lifetime. Now, I'll admit, I just don't know a lot, a lot about this guy. Seems great, but the first issue this guy is going to face is that he's less known now than Mike Pence was before Trump picked him. So name recognition is probably going to be a problem, but that doesn't really matter, again, if Trump's at the top of the ticket. Oh. But on the other side, not being known and not having a long record has its obvious benefits, too. He's obviously smart if he made his way as a billionaire in the tech world, but we'll see where he falls. There's also reports of Senator Tom Cotton that he may be on the short list, who I've been in favor of during his time as a senator. All right. So <clears throat> that was the list. Now, like I said, comment below who you believe should be his pick, even if they weren't a part of that list there. Because I personally have someone that wasn't even a part of that list on my personal short list of who I believe should be the VP pick. Now, with that being said, let's get into this list. My number one pick happens to fall right in line with Carl Higby. Byron. <laughs> and y'all know, I, I've been saying Byron Donald's name for a while now. For a while. Easy. That, that easy pick. The only thing that makes me hesitate is that he's from Florida. If Byron was from Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, or Wisconsin, bro, no questions asked. Trump, you better pick Byron. You've got no choice. You got to pick Byron. And like he said, Byron is the most similar to Trump. <laughs> Byron is literally just the black version of Trump. <laughs> I mean, literally. Literally. He takes no crap. He pulls no punches. He's America first, and he doesn't apologize for it. And like you heard him say, I'm 6'2", 270. You're not about to scare me. <laughs> All right. Uh, number two on my short list would be uh, J.D. Vance, who is from Ohio, one of the states that I mentioned. Um, and like you said, J.D. Vance has this unique advantage of being a guy who wasn't necessarily for Trump before, but it's switched over to actually being all for Trump. Now, do I think J.D. Vance could lead the Republican Party? 
you know, in 2028 and beyond. That one's a little more questionable. Where with Byron, bro, I have I have zero doubts. Zero doubts. And I'm, I'm sure all of you have zero doubts on Byron Donalds being able to lead the Republican Party from 2028 forward, right? Z- I, don't, I don't think Byron would have any type of issues with that one. Also, obviously, uh, it would also destroy the narrative for the left and Democrats always using the race issue. It throws that one out of the window, but that one's obvious. We don't need to talk about that one too much. <clears throat> um... Third on my list is someone who isn't even on Trump's short list, but I would throw Vivek in there. Yeah, I know. Um, I did have some questions about Vivek. They weren't questions like I had about uh, Ron DeSantis, and I told you guys about that. And it's also funny how that one played out, you know, uh, before or early on, you know, I was like, man, there's something about Ron DeSantis and I just can't put my finger on it. I, I, I can't tell you what it is, but just something feels off about this guy. And then as they continue to run, like it all started to come out and we all started to see, you know, exactly what he was all about. <clears throat> now, great governor. But um, yeah, what he, he, he wasn't he wasn't presidential material. Um, now, am I saying J.D. Vance is that same type of level? No, no. Um, am I saying Vivek or I question Vivek that much? No, I do have a couple questions, but nothing, nothing even close to Ron DeSantis. Like he doesn't give me that same feeling, you know? It's just Vivek is new, you know. There's still a lot to learn about Vivek. He he talks a good game. He's obviously got the cash to back it up, right? Um, <clears throat> and he seems like an American America first type of guy. Somebody who's not going to be afraid to go into the fire, right? And um, is going to be willing to step into that fire. Now, uh, my fourth pick would be Elise Stefanik. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be my fourth pick on my short list, personally. Um, from everything that I have personally seen, and granted, I'm sure there's still a lot that I can learn about Elise Stefanik, um, but from everything that I, that I have personally seen, she's a fighter. She don't, she don't take no crap from nobody, and she's going to let you know how it is whenever she wants to let you know how it is, you know? She don't pull no punches either. Um I, I, I don't I don't think she would be a, a terrible pick for VP either. Now, in terms of leading the party from 2028 forward, I think it's either got to be really. I feel like it has to be Byron. Hey, listen, if I'm tripping, let me know. But I feel like from 2028 forward, and I, I don't feel like Byron has to be the VP either in order for him to lead the party forward. I think Byron could step in towards the end and, you know, Trump brings him out, you know, right? Puts him into the spotlight a little bit more. Although people really know who Byron Donalds already is. It's not like he's a nobody at this point. But like Carl was saying, he's the closest to what Trump is or to who Trump is. He's he's a black version of Trump. He don't pull no punches. Don't take no crap from nobody. I feel like Byron Donald should lead the Republican, the new Republican Party from 2028 forward. He's my top pick for VP, but I wouldn't be mad about J.D. Vance either, you know. Um, if I had to pick a fifth, yeah, I, I don't even know. I feel like everybody else is kind of... Uh, Kind of jumbled up and a little bit even beyond beyond Elise Stefanik, you know, Marco Rubio, Doug Burgum, Tim Scott, uh, uh, um, goodness gracious, uh, the, the the doctor, um, Ben Carson. I feel like they're all a little bit even, like they're they're like all tied for fifth, you know, in my humble opinion. But what's yours? Let me know in the comment section below and why, as I explained a little bit as to why I you know, chose some of the folks that I chose. But like I said, my number one pick has got to be Byron. And Carl's was Byron too. The only thing that I don't like is that he's from Florida. Had he been from any of those, like, what do you, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Rust Belt states, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, like the Wisconsin, like that sort of area. Instant, instant, easy, easy. No questions asked. 
No questions asked. The only thing that gives me a cause to pause is he's from Florida. That's it. That's all. But y'all let me know your thoughts and your opinions. Peace and love. I'm out.